Hey, hey, welcome to Film Fanatics. My name is Dan. My name is Justin. And I'm Joe. This week it's all about the spooky with our Halloween themed show. Oh my god. Uh, we've got Boo, a Medea Halloween, Ouija Origin of Evil, Rob Zombies 31, and the debut film from our own Joe uh, called Sacrifice, which uh, you can check out right now on his YouTube channel, Merlin the Mighty. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, and first up is the movie uh, with Joe. Not Joe's movie, but <laughs> Joe's going to lead us into Boo, a Medea Halloween. Or as I just like to call it, Halloween. Mm, you know? Also <laughs> also true. Um, Arguably better title. Well, really, what can I really say to uh, summarize this film? Basically, Medea is Medea. Mm-hmm. And she has, to, Medea, thanks. she has to hang out with a bunch of her friends uh, trying to watch over these teens who just kind of want to escape and party. And there's kind of a bit of a collision between them and all kinds of hijinks ensue when they're convinced the place is haunted and uh, there's other antics as well as the generations clash. And mm-hmm. there's this epic family drama of, of like just, just racial tensions. Always and, is. And just... Uh, um, well, I'll say this. Uh... I don't really think I've seen too many of these before. I think I saw the Christmas you one. You saw Christmas. Yep. I think that was your first. I think that was my first. Yeah. Uh, which I think I enjoyed this one a little more than that. Okay. In the sense that I, I confess that I, I don't like a lot of the humor in this movie, but I do sometimes find Medea funny. And, mm-hmm. and, I, and I don't like finding her funny, but I, I can't I can't <laughs> deny the fact that I laughed a couple times. And, and I'll say this much. Uh, I think that... Some things, I felt like there were some jokes that did work, but oftentimes they went on too long. Like, mm-hmm. they just have a gag, and okay, this is kind of funny, but let's keep going, let's keep going. And, Sandler effect. And, yeah, and then they Pretty would just much, yeah. sort of repeat the same kind of situations throughout the movie, you know, without really altering it too much. So, you know, that was kind of an issue. I thought, uh, I don't know, so, some of the characters were kind of funny, some of them were kind of annoying, and, and some of them were just downright offensive. Like, I thought, personally, I, I'm surprised that... I don't know if Tyler Perry thinks it's funny to like make all these jokes about older people constantly. Mm-hmm. I just think that the character for that was... I thought it was kind of offensive and mean some of the time, which sort of bugged me. But some of the jokes, you know, about some of the teens being silly, I guess was all right. Um, I thought some of it was funny. I thought a lot of it wasn't funny. But I will say this. A lot of the people in my theater seem to love it. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely hitting a chord with someone... And I always try to take that into account. Yeah. So, Medea, there's some good stuff in there, but I just wish that there was something more focused and, honestly, I guess just a, a little better prepared than the same jokes over and over again over extended. Mm-hmm. So, there's something better, but it was only an occasional good time for me, I guess. Okay. I mean, I think this movie is more or less what you would expect when you go to a Medea film. I guess. This is, I'm not sure, the seventh or eighth one perhaps Mm -hmm. um i would say there's more medea in this though than usual Hmm. usually uh medea is only in the movie about 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes you know she's the hook to get you in the theater and then it's the morality play more than the medea jokes Hmm. um so she was in it i would say at least twice as much as normal. She's in it quite a bit, yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, after three years of diminishing returns on the uh, the box office receipts and a movie just about every year, uh, I think Medea fans were, were clamoring for more, more Medea in this movie, and uh, and they got it. I think, I agree, Joe, you know, I think the people that uh, really enjoy these movies are going to enjoy this one as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it got an A cinema score from the uh, opening night polls that they took uh uh, around the country so i mean the fans are there the laughter was certainly there yeah laughter was there um but like most of of the movies you know they're not really all that good uh you know perry did this tyler perry we're talking about obviously he can't write still his directing is uh Hey, not good. His acting was decent though, uh, when he his was acting's himself. always decent. He was when he's himself, he's okay. When he's Medea, he's better. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. Say. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. he plays the dad in the in the movie, uh, and Medea is his ma or his aunt, I think. Honestly, that was yeah, nothing that confused me. Yeah. As the um, the relations confuse me a bit. But yeah, uh, the kids are mostly pretty bad actors. Really bad. Yeah, the kids um, are pretty bad. Yeah. You know, and then like all Medea movies, the moral lessons are sort of negated by a lot of other questionable content throughout the movie. 
Uh, Joe, yeah. you sort of mentioned some of the yeah. maybe you know inappropriate kind of jokes. Well, uh, yeah. um, but the man knows his audience. He gives them what he wants with these Medea movies every time. Mm-hmm. I certainly didn't have this one on the top of my Medea list. I've seen all but I think one of them, uh, which happens to be the first real big one, The Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Um, but I did laugh a few times. Uh, but I also thought there was more like... I don't know if that maybe mean spirited humor. Like in the beginning, like the taking candy out of the kids, like uh, yeah. that pale and like, like thinking it's real o- funny. Honestly, that was my biggest issue with it. stuff like that. I just that it's made like, me feel uncomfortable. This is just they're just mean. That's stuff. not yeah. funny to me. It's just mean. Yeah. Um, you know, and Medea wasn't saying, "Hey, you should do that." Medea was, you know, chiding the woman for doing it, but still, it's like <laughs> it's still the bad. audience was supposed to find it funny, right? Uh, and I didn't. So. Better maybe than one or two of the Medea movies. Certainly not as good as others. Uh, but I think the audience will love it. Justin? Notorious failing for every Tyler Perry movie. Uh, yeah, I believe that statement's accurate. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> certainly since we've been doing the show. But anyways, uh, no. Um, so once again, Perry's back as director so many times. All of it. Okay. Director, producer, writer. All that jazz? Yeah, all right. Now, uh, <laughs> actor. And it's... It's amazing that he truly does still stick to his formula despite all critical panning around. But he does know his audience. He definitely plays to that. And I think he definitely knows what the fan service is. Again, like Sandler, I would uh, say. To to varying degrees, yeah. certainly. Um, so one thing that I kept thinking throughout this was, all right, so a common counter-argument I get from Tyler Perry fans is, okay, the movies are crap, we get that, but the plays are actually pretty good. Never seen them, I can't speak to that. But one thing that I kept thinking about that was, is he just not understanding where the stage ends and the screen begins? Admittedly, the story here is about as deep as an elementary school fight, but <laughs> but the execution just feels like a lot of this might be might be slightly more amusing if you we were watching it on, in a big theater production. You know, I, I could I could add on to that. Actually, seeing the way people were acting more bombastically, mm-hmm. I could see that working a little better if it was a stage performance. Actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe. So that that's interesting, yeah. I mean, I can see where some of it works. I, I'll say I laughed once, two or three times I got a chuckle. But that uh, was... Wow. What's the one that made you laugh? That's pretty good uh, for you. You know, I can't even remember off the top of my head, but I, I do remember there was at least one thing that actually got a laugh out of me. I got okay. a laugh out of Justin. That's uh, good. Uh, yeah. But then again, a Medea Christmas got a laugh out of me. Um, that's true. But here's the thing. Nothing has really changed. Characters are flat. Editing is a nightmare. The moral is atrocious. And honestly, I just don't get it. I really have been struggling for years to figure out, like, okay, what do people see in this truly appalling human be- human being trying to teach quote-unquote lessons? I think she could be worse. Oh, she could be significantly worse, but it's like, you're still doing really bad things and people are treating you like you're this hilarious moral conscience, which is questionable at best and who am i to say but but just as a whole i mean more the same to be honest okay but what of the enjoyment of the crowd and the fan service that's where i'm I'm torn like it's not works for somebody it's not as lazy i I mean yeah it's not as lazy as with the media christmas where he's literally ripping off far better movies but it's still lazy in the fact that he just took what is essentially a a TV special and turned it into an, uh, I don't know, an hour 42 hour movie inserting random B stories. And of course, as Joe mentioned, ridiculous hijinks. Well, you always get that. That's the point, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Joe, uh, what, what would your grade be for a Medea Halloween? Yeah, I thought it was okay. I leave it with a C minus. Okay. It's a D plus for me, but just on that edge of a D. You know, I've I'm playing it straight down to the wire. I debated giving this one an F. I really did. Oh my god, first non Perry F. That'd be crazy. But I was like, okay, the fan service is there. People did enjoy it. It's not as lazy as Medea Christmas, even though it's still pretty lazy. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give a very, very generous D minus. Oh, wow. The crowd I like it. don't even know what to do. That's pretty crazy. D minus is the highest for a Perry. Oh, look, at least we know there's somewhere for him to go. Keep going up. Get that D. <laughs> I don't know about that. Get that Justin D. 
Big dreams, big dreams. <laughs> All right, well, up next is Ouija, Origin of Evil. And in this film, fake fortune teller Alice, played by Elizabeth Reeser, and her two daughters decide to add a Ouija board to the act when their home is being foreclosed upon and they have to spice things up for more business. However, the board possesses the young daughter, played by newcomer Lulu Wilson, as she tries to make contact with her deceased father. Soon the entire family and everyone around them is in danger. Annalise Basso co-stars as the older sister, and Henry Thomas, the kid in E.T., plays the girl's principal father, Tom. Now, I did not despise the first film in the now franchise of Ouija. I thought it was average. But where that went wrong is being a completely standard horror film in just about every way. This one should have been the first movie all along. First of all, it's the origin of the evil, so let's hash it out chronologically. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rather, than, rather than a prequel, so. by, very by the numbers first movie and then yeah. a prequel. But I, I did find that this movie was uh, full of some pretty good scares, both of the generic variety and the genuinely creepy variety. Um, but I also think it's bolstered by a fantastic por- performance from the young girl, uh, Wilson. I thought she did a great job, uh, and for being really a newcomer, uh, you get a, a very good spooky vibe from from her uh i thought reeser does a decent job uh but unfortunately where the movie falters is basso's lame performance as the older sister uh we saw her in oculus as well another pretty average horror movie the whole subplot with like her prom date was hey man you know i gotta get to prom (laughs) i understand but carrie already went to prom (laughs) we already did that in a horror movie and, you know, with that in mind, it, it borrows also from movies like Poltergeist and, and other things like that. But it gets the era very right, uh, and I would much prefer a movie to borrow from classics, like, you know, The Conjuring did, rather than the routine crop of horror that the first film borrowed from. Yeah. Uh, it does make an odd choice for the uh, the 35 millimeter black splotch at the top the right burn. of the... Yeah, but that's the only, like thing like we're covering rob zombies 31 next which was actually filmed in a very 70s like style this grindhouse. that's other than i'm sorry grindhouse like yeah grindhouse yeah style. grindhouse style but the only thing this movie has in that department is the the burn it's right. kind of an odd so choice I'm, I'm glad that was actually purposeful because i wondered if there was a problem with the projector <laughs> yeah no, they don't they don't do that anymore because everything's uh digital, digital yeah now. yeah i know so there's no there's but then yeah then why would you choose that to be just the one little thing and that's what i didn't get i thought okay. it was very odd um but you know i i don't think it's maybe as strong as some of the better horrors of the year you know green room don't breathe, Conjuring Two, uh, but I do think it's a lot stronger than the first film. A lot of uh, a lot stronger than some of the other horror we've been getting lately. So it was uh, you know, a little bit of a mixed bag for me, Justin. So this is definitely the prequel that I would argue nobody really wanted, and is somehow better than what the original. Which uh, there aren't too many you can say that about. That's weird. So one of the things I, I liked about this is it keeps it keeps a very nice retro tone i did like the cigarette burns i like the sort of old school title sequence at the start of it mm-hmm. yeah with the like roman numerals for the year it's it's nostalgic and it's not and it's not like the bread and butter of it but it's, it's interesting and i like the way they implemented it when when appropriate if they were constantly doing like uh uh i, I don't know like grainy grainy film and stuff like that might not might be a little too much but i think a little touch here and there makes a big difference hmm. um I think some of the scares work, many don't. I One of the big things that bothered me was just so much reliance on jump scares. And and as per usual with, with anything from Bloomhouse, a lot of build-up to a kind of okay climax. Hmm. It's it's not bad. It's certainly an improvement over the first one. But it's it, it's just okay. The ending just gets really, really weird. And okay, we get it. You're trying to tie it into the first movie, but really, I, I like the ending. I, I would just treat it as like a standalone entity. Okay, Joe's uh, in stitches over here. <laughs> just, what, what's funny? It's just he said something that made me think of something. Oh, okay, interesting. I just had like an internal perverted, whatever. Do you mean Joe? Perverted joke that I'd have to say all fair. I see. Oh dear. So anyway. Uh, what did I think about the yeah, movie? Yeah, what were your thoughts on no. the movie? Um, no, but uh, I agree with pretty much everything you guys said. I think the thing that's really interesting about this movie is not so much what it is itself, but where it kind of exists. Because 
I wisely did not see the first movie, and you guys said it was terrible. And uh, then I heard that they were making a sequel, which really confused me because the first one really was apparently hated. It wasn't very well received. It was hated, but it it broke even and then some. So yeah, it broke even. It made money, and then they actually made a another movie that apparently people thought was really good. So it was kind of interesting to see what the the difference would be there. And having no frame of reference, I thought this one was good. You know, okay. I, I mean, like, I think it's kind of fitting along with the thing that's been working is that sort of that retro style that it's kind of modeled after The Conjuring. Let's film it like it is an older horror movie, set it in that older setting. But, you know, actually make sure that that is conveyed well. And it, it is that well, I'd say. I think that that vibe is probably the strongest thing about it is you really feel like you're in that 60s atmosphere. And I, I always appreciate that. I thought the performances were good. Uh, I thought that the, I guess some of the story elements were fine. And there were some scares, some creepiness, but I, I do hate too many jump scares. I think yeah, that's there's a lot in too, this. too cheap. And, you know, I guess if the first one was generic horror, this one felt to me like it was kind of in the same standard zone, but it was just done well, mm-hmm. basically. So, you know, it's it's not bad. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. But, you know, it's, I don't think it was anything mind-blowing. Yeah, I, I'm... I'm actually surprised that it's being received as well as as it is. Maybe because the first one, the was, first so one was so bad, they were credit where credit is due. Yeah, credits cr- critics were just sort of expecting well, this is going to suck, and yeah. then you know it turns out it's it good. Didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. I I don't know. Oddly though, um, the uh, the audiences are giving it the same grade. <laughs> the the cinema score is at a C, just like the first movie, which I think is mm. weird. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. I mean, horror is notoriously hard to get a high cinema score of because everybody goes into them with, for some reason, very high expectations and is always disappointed. Hmm. So, you know, you get more Fs and Ds in the horror genre. Well, I feel like so many know, people with are... With cinema score than any other genre. Well, I feel like so many people now are going to horror movies like expecting every single one to be the scariest thing ever. And Well, that's what I always hype it up as. Well, I think you're not wrong. wrong. You know, I think they kind the of remember. I think they probably remember the last good one. Like probably. you know, for the next six months, they're going to be like, "Oh, Don't Breathe was really great." You know, they they're not going to well, think, "Oh, well, the darkness I saw that and it sucked." Well, that's the you thing. Know, they, they think of the, the the last really good one because they pump them out so consistently because they can and people yeah, like to cheap. go, go yeah. to horror movies for fun. You know, and they that's the thing they forget about them because they're all the same. Yeah, that's that's the real answer. Pretty there, much. they all they all you fit them in there, and they're yeah. a dime a dozen. So yeah, you know, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, I really liked the the, uh, the costumes and the hair. Yeah, I thought they got the era really really well. And uh, there's which for a, a horror movie is rare. There's a little bit of a sort of a twist with the whole seance thing, and and I liked how that mm. was set up. Mm-hmm. I liked some of the practical set elements. Okay, you know, acting. I liked the acting. I thought it was good, even from, uh, from the older I, sister. I mean, yeah, it wasn't as impressive as the little girls, but <laughs> yeah. it wasn't bad. She, okay. was, she seemed like an, for what a, it is. an annoyed teenager to me. Okay, you know? fair enough. Seen plenty of bad ones. Yes, well, that is true. <laughs> far, far worse. Yeah. All right. Well, Joe, what's your grade for Ouija Origin of Evil? Well, I think that the Origin of Evil is uh, B. Okay, it's B minus for me, Justin. C plus. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, thirty one is next. Uh, Justin's going to tell us about that. All right, 31, the latest from Rob Zombie. As per usual with any Rob Zombie film, Tell Jerry me. Moon is leading the charge as a... Uh, well, look, Justin, sometimes you just got to keep it in the family. I, I guess. Is that his daughter? Yeah. Right? Oh. Wife? I think, Wait, is his wife? I think so. Anyways. Uh, uh, Jerry Moon Zombie plays Charlie, a worker for a traveling carnival with her co-workers. The group is kidnapped and brought into the a twisted location known as, quote, Murder World, wherein they are forced to play a perilous game called 31. Or the Hunger Games. Which which might as well be the Hunger Games, but less less food. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yes. By surviving 12 hours against the most twisted individuals at their disposal. Twisted. Yeah. Malcolm McDowell and Richard Brake have supporting roles. It's been quite a while since we last talked about Rob Zombie. I think the the last time was our anniversary episode when I got off on a tangent with The Devil's Rejects. So, we might be overdue. I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with this one. I respect this movie for a lot of reasons. I think crowdfunding really has its place in terms of filmmaking. I, I like the fact that there's a lot more urgency to try and fight for creative control. And I think that says a lot. But at the same time, that's also, in the case of 31... A blessing and a curse. 
I think with Rob Zombie, there's there's a lot I respect about the guy's philosophy as a filmmaker, like trying trying to appease the fans that have worked that have uh, that are funding this, that are trying to get his vision to to fruition. Sure. And I mean, the fact that he was able to make a perk where he could literally call some of his backers and explain what was going on in the production. Props. That's not something you hear too often. And literal props, lots. Of them. <laughs> oh, certainly, <laughs> certainly. However, then comes the the film as a whole. No. Now I want to make this abundantly clear before we go any further. This was the this was the cut version. So what was left on the editing room floor, I don't know. I'm I probably will end up giving the unrated cut a second go at some point in time, but for the R rated cut, I feel like there's a lot of zombie signature stuff here and it's amazing that after all this time he really hasn't learned anything it's the same grindhousey style it's the same redneck over overtones it's what he likes to do tyler perry yeah, it's, same it's what he likes to do <laughs> we, we just talked but, about that but he doesn't ever really bring anything new to the table it's just constant like exploitation it's constant reliance on gore it's what he likes to do he's, he's got a couple interesting tricks up his sleeves here and there and and I can't really say I was ever bored with it, but the acting is shoddy at best. The editing is really weird at times. Sometimes it, it's it's very him, but it's going to be very it's going to be extremely love it or hate it unless you're a hardcore zombie fan. Hey, that music though. Even the music I thought was kind of odd. Whoa! Stri- dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah. man! Um, certainly trying to go for his like metal vibe, but. Well, yeah, it's what he does. It's, it's, what, he does. it's what he does. So I'm going to call my review. Though I, I, it's what he does. Though I mean, the choice for the ending was just weird. Um, yeah, it's a little weird. And the conclusion is just, frankly, rather bizarre. It's, it's been bizarre in the past, though. It has, but it's <laughs> been it's been more uniquely bizarre. Like I was, I at least felt like I saw, I saw something different. And this one, it's like, okay, you're just doing the same thing you've been doing since I guess 2004. I mean, I think I think a lot of stuff Justin said isn't really wrong, but I guess my response would just be it's his crowdfunded movie for his fans when Rob Zombie has a very particular style like a lot of directors do, Tarantino, Perry, Certainly. they do what they do yeah. and if it gets results, I guess they'll just do it. Uh, you yeah, know, but good filmmakers like build on that. They think about what's coming next. They don't just keep giving you the same s- the same spiel over and over uh, and over again. I mean, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, I Depends guess depends on the filmmaker, yeah. though. I mean, you know, they might want to push the envelope and try to do something better next time. But I, I would argue that even though his movies contain a lot of the same elements, his movies are all different, though. I mean, they're they In are various ways. Certainly, I, I mean, you know, I can't so, speak to the Lords of Salem, but you know, I mean, there's you know, there's enough variety in all of them. I can't say that he makes the exact same movie every time. That would be a bit extreme. I mean, there's sim- yeah, a lot of similarities, yeah, right? I mean, it's it's right. still the same, like, okay, d- Deep South, somebody's somebody's completely crazy. And Evil Carney stuff, you know, yeah, like typ- exploitation. But, typically Evil Carney-ish. But it's like, honestly, I would just say he's doing what he does, and, you know... I mean, that, that's also <laughs> the, the this flip side of crowdfunding. Like, okay, yeah, he's... It's great that he's able to achieve his vision, but at the same time, it can easily descend into art is holier than that, which I think is... The downfall of thirty one. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I I agree with you that this movie could have certainly been better, and it certainly could have been like a, um, an excellent masterpiece of horror for sure. I think that there was a lot of potential there. I think some of the acting, you know, it wasn't that great, but it could have been worse. You know, it could have been a lot worse. And I think that for what you expect, it got some good actors there. You got McDowell, you know, being a being a villain like he always is. It seems you got you got some good elements there. I mean, the gore is good. The effects are good. There is some scary, intense atmosphere. There's plenty of exploitation themes. I thought the style was pretty good. I, I liked the soundtrack. I do agree the editing was weird because sometimes I thought that there were he really captured the scene well, but he'd do these weird little like PowerPoint slide things where he'd slow things down, mm-hmm. and during some of the fights, the camera would get shaky, and you wouldn't be 100% sure what was happening sometimes. Mm-hmm. And some characters would die, and I'm like... I don't know who that is. <laughs> you know, who so are you? yeah, so that that was a bit iffy, uh, and but I didn't mind all that. Like I'll tell you right now, if the whole movie had been like the opening, it would have been like an A plus because the opening I really liked personally. That was creepy. It was scary. Mm-hmm. It was intense in your face, quite literally. <laughs> I, I liked it. It was. It Truly. felt very real. I felt like I was there. I'm like, oh god, this person is going to kill me. This is where my life ends. That was like A plus material, but it's like the first like eight minutes of the right. movie. Yeah. You know, and then everything else comes. 
Uh, my biggest issue with the movie, though, isn't so much that he's doing basically the same thing. It's just that his characters aren't particularly likable. I just, I just, not especially. You know, and, and I think Rob Zombie would know, since he's a big horror guy, that one of the key rules about horror movies is you got to make the characters somewhat likable. Yeah. And if you don't, then you're not going to care about it as much. And I'll be honest, I, I didn't. I mean, some of them looked good. Some of them were fighting the bad guys, and like this is cool, but uh, I didn't really like the characters too much. Well, that was my big issue. This was uh, my first zombie as a director foray. I'm very well versed well, in the music. You've seen the music video. I've sure. seen the music videos <laughs> uh, for some of the songs. You know, I've got some of the records, and that's fine. Um, but you know, even I could tell just from sort of seeing previews from his previous films. This is what the guy does, and. You know, that's fine. I mean, it's clearly, you know, his homage to the, the 70s B-movies, uh, which really didn't have good acting for the most part, you know. Um, and that's, it is what it is, you know. I don't think this is a particularly great movie, uh, but it's certainly his own vision. I, I had no doubt at any point watching this that... It's very uh, Rob Zombie. Yeah, that, that anybody yeah. else was... Really, you know, that deeply involved in, you know, the directing of this feature, other than Rob Zombie, um, I didn't know the thing about the the wife slash daughter, whoever Cherry Moon Zombie is, but <laughs> she's not a good actress. Uh, especially now, and you know, I mean, none of them are really that good. Um, but I, I that that was my biggest issue with it as well, Joe, is that the characters aren't fleshed out at all. Like, you know, it's gory. It's yep. creepy. Yeah. You know, there, there's definitely some things that are, are frightening, and I agree the the that opening scene, I thought the whole movie was going to be like that, and I'm like, wow, this is going to be... That's pretty intense. And then comes unique, everything else. Something intense, and then the rest of the movie begins, and, and it's like, oh... Like, I'm well, going to just say, like, cut that. not nearly like, as enjoyable. Short, short film by Rob Zombie. Yeah. Was, there we go. Yeah. yeah that, you know, nothing else even came close to that first scene and that's not really what you want in a movie i mean yeah no. you do want to have a good hook at the beginning yeah but, but you gotta also want your, the rest of your to movie hook, to though. be uh well even <laughs> if you don't commit to that hook specifically Try. make the rest of your movie at least that engaging Ugh. that's what I was, that was what i was implying okay yeah i mean you know if, if that's the foray into something else that's fine but make it enjoyable so, uh, for me, it wasn't really a great experience, but I can't say it was terrible. I mean, it was certainly terrifying in some spots, uh, which is obviously the point of a, a movie like this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, in some respects, it did its job. I would say for Rob Zombie fans, it really did its job. Oh, yeah, no um, question. But for everybody else, I don't know. Joe, what's your grade on 31? Well, Rob Zombie is Rob Zombie. It's a B-. minus. Okay, C for me. Justin? Uh, might be a lower grade if uh, it wasn't for the fact that I think in some spots, one thing he does really well is like creating narrative callbacks, like giving giving justification for later for scenes in later moments. Sure. Uh, and I really did appreciate that motif. Um, I give it a D+. Plus. Ooh. House of Thousand Corpses is still my favorite. Okay. Like, you know, yeah, you do uh, like that one. You know. All right, well, finally, we have uh, Joe's own film, Sacrifice. And Joe, of course, won't be reviewing this, but he did uh, a commentary on his own channel. Sure. Uh, I, there's a can, couple you can check out. Actually. Yeah, there's also the cast, uh, cast yeah, and crew commentary, I, did, there I guess, was a, right? Which you tried to listen to, apparently. No, I couldn't get through <laughs> I mean, that. There's, but... there's the directors, there's the cast, the booper reel, and there's actually like a group review we did, too. So I, oh, guess okay. I, I sort of... So you sort of reviewed I, it. I did. Basically, what, what I did was I had the... It was kind of like a first showing sort of thing, so it was kind of like it was after the commentary, and we had most of the cast there and a couple guest people that never seen the movie before. Okay, say their like favorite things and least favorite things about it, and whatnot, and trying to get some opinions. And I talked about it a bit too. Okay, so you know, yeah, I guess very I've, good. I've kind, so you, kind you, of you can check out, you know, listeners, you can check out Joe's uh, thoughts so, on it. So many videos on yeah, it. Yeah, but point. but he wanted to uh, really pick me and Justin's brains. Justin's in my brain, I should say. Yes, sure. dramatically. Um, Scrambled or, you know, like, over easy. <laughs> over easy. Uh, <laughs> poached. For, poached, you know, mm, what, what we thought of the movie. sounds good. <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's talk about it. Uh, Joe, do you want to do a synopsis or do you want me to do the uh, the basics? You know what? I would be more interested if you guys try to do a synopsis. Okay. Um, well, essentially, there's a, a group of uh, friends heading to 
one of those friends' houses, uh, the female of the group, uh, for a few days, and we learn that uh, all of her neighbors have moved away uh, to, due to a Ponzi scheme, so the, the neighborhood's virtually desolate. Uh, when they get there, everything's in disarray. There's no TV signal. There's you know stuff all over the floor, and they find her brother nearly dead upstairs and his girlfriend uh, that was apparently there nowhere to be found. Wow, that's, that's pretty accurate. Pretty good, right? Yeah, that, I'm, what happens? I'm, I'm actually happy that that at least uh, came across well. Yeah. The only the only the other thing I had was that they find the uh, the necromancer book and start sort of theorizing what might have happened uh, based on that. That's that is true. That is so, what happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, uh, this movie was was sort of interesting to watch because I know half of the cast. Good friends with the director, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so it was interesting to sort of view it from, to try and view it from an outsider's perspective, um, which I'm not sure I completely did, but I tried. So let's see. There's the bad and the good. I mean, Joe is a smart person. Uh, I think he probably knows the faults of his movie. Uh, one is the lighting for sure. You know, that's that's obvious. No comment. Um, oh, I hope there's a comment. <laughs> Please. The, uh, th- there's sort of a, a vague reach of power of the demon. You don't exactly know what their powers entail. And also the, the gun that is used in the film. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. It's like a styrofoam something or other. I thought it was a staple gun, to be honest, at oh. first. It sort of has that shape. Sure. That oblong shape of a staple gun. But look, here's the thing. I mean, this movie was made for like 10 bucks. It's not like even a Clerks or a Blair Witch where it's like, okay, yeah, it was on a minuscule budget, but minuscule by Hollywood standards, $10,000, $7,000. You know, this was done on a shoestring. So, you know, you have to sort of take that for what it is. Uh, so here's what I liked about the movie. Oh, good, there's something. Cause I, no, well, like I said, you know, I think you already probably know the, the flaws of your own oh, movie. Oh, believe me. Um, and and I'll tell you, listeners, I purposely didn't listen to Joe's commentary on it because I, I didn't want to kind of go into it knowing, okay, well, Joe liked this and Joe didn't like this. I wanted to give him my interpretation. Um, so here's the things I liked. First of all, I'm going to start this off by saying earlier tonight I saw a riff tracks of a movie called Carnival of Souls. Oh, now this is a real nice. movie, I guess. Classic. Okay. <laughs> Classic. Please do continue. Um, the the film that Joe made is only 50 minutes. This one, Carnival of Souls, is maybe like an hour and 25. I mean, it's a you know feature length movie. Yeah. Man, even with the riffing and the laughing, I was doing. That movie felt like three times as long as yours. I think the pacing of your movie is very brisk. You know, it didn't feel like 50 minutes. I I had to pause it to uh, get up and refill my drink. I was watching it on on my TV because I have YouTube on my Blu-ray. How much did you drink beforehand? No, it's just my water. Stop it. Um, And I didn't know how far in I was. I thought maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It was was already a half hour in. And I was like, wow, there's only 20 minutes left. So I like that. Um... The acting is better than I anticipated, knowing the cast. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm friendly with three of the five cast members. When you told me who was in the movie, I sort of was like, mm, okay, we'll see how this goes. Uh, Will, specifically, was, I think did a really good job in this movie. Yeah, better than I expected. Yeah. Um, now, the girl, I, I don't know. You guys sort of, Lucy. you know, found her. Um, I thought she did a pretty decent job. She was a trooper. Yeah. Um, I think there's a few good uh, camera angles that you had. That ending shot on the mantis and the ants, I loved. One or two. Yeah. Um, the, the classic looking up shot. Yeah, you can't take full credit you know. for that one, yeah. What else? Uh, I thought the voice effects at the end on Jesse's character was cool. Um, what else? Um, well, you're... The, the only other thing, I, I did have one thing, and you don't have to necessarily answer. Okay. Um, but... The thing with where the camera would sort of um, shake isn't the right word, but sort of like m- move at the start of a scene. I wasn't sure if that was a camera issue Wait. or an effect that you were doing, but I kind of got into it after a little while. You mean it was like a little uh, pulse, you could say. Oh, the hmm. the uh, the you mean the little the shake? Yeah. Uh... Like it's not, I don't want to say shake because it's not like a sh- like a green grass. Is, is it is it like a brief like almost a zoom in? Yes, sort it's of a thing? little zoom in and out. That is 
a technical issue okay. that I'm happy to hear you liked. Yeah, it's sort <laughs> of like at, at, when it first started, I was like, oh, that, that okay. Is, that is a, I don't uh, know if that's that is a post, supposed to be uh, there, but... That is a, a post-production thing that could not entirely be fixed. Okay. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I but, sort of figured it was something along those lines, but I, like I said, like, like it's it, like a, a at first it was distracting, and then I kind of it's like the the black blotch well, on the Ouija. It's kind of like thing. it was uh, like okay, like a, like a click on next scene, click on next scene. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the the smoothness of the cutting is a bit yeah. of an issue, I guess, hmm. with the with the camera. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that's um, some that's something yeah. that I've had with my camera for years. Couldn't change it, but yeah. I'm glad it helped you. What I wanted was more from the characters, obviously. You did this all on a on no budget. Mm-hmm. You know, you did it all. You you didn't pay the actors. Everybody's doing it. You know, yeah. just for free. So, uh, you know, obviously, if you had been able to do a full length feature that was maybe an hour and fifteen, hour and twenty, mm-hmm. I think those characters would have been fleshed out a little more. Yeah, I didn't really know them very well. Mm. I sort of got the sense that the Jesse character, one of the girl, don't know quite how I felt about uh, Alex's race. character. <laughs> really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't either. <laughs> but again, I, I didn't know them that well. So, yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, look, if you had a budget, obviously yeah. this would be a better production. But I tried that. to look at it for the script, the directing choices. Uh, and I thought it was okay for for a first effort. I, I thought it was pretty cool. All right. Yeah. Justin? <laughs> what a Justin thing. That's what this I really be, want to hear. This I know. Be, you don't care what I think. <laughs> no, I know. Dan's a nice guy. No, this would be pretty quick. <laughs> All right. So, oh, hopefully not that quick. Listeners... There's a fine line between artist and creation. Now, on the show, we've had plenty of moments where I've indicated bias. I've mentioned things are touchier than they probably should be. But this is probably the point where I draw the line in terms of getting a little too close for comfort in between those lines on the critic front. I can respect the creator. I can respect the creation. But I can't, in good conscience, review the movie without an unbiased light. So therefore, I am respectfully choosing to abstain from reviewing Sacrifice. Okay, well, I guess that's that. Yeah, that's pretty quick. That's my review of it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, would you like a grade for it? Sure. I would give it a C plus. Yay. I think, you know, I think it's it's hard to do a movie with no budget and completely uh, amateur actors and, and everything else. Very. But I, I think there was definitely some interesting things about it. Cool. So, there you go. Sure. Uh, all you. right. Well, that is the show. Uh, next week, we'll be back with a slate of you know non-Halloween movies. Uh, Inferno will be in there, as well as the new Jack Reacher. It's kind of a Halloween movie. Um, <laughs> it's demons and stuff. True. Yeah, Angels and Demons was the book. Uh, all right. So, uh, you can check out the full film, Sacrifice, as well as the commentaries on uh, so many. Merlin the Mighty, Joe's channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as well, you can subscribe to that, subscribe to our channel. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there you go. Check us out on Facebook, Film Fanatics with an exclamation point, and on the Twitter feed, at Film Fanatics Pod. And thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.